Good morning. Welcome to Brittany on the Bluff, brought to you each weekday by today's computers. Whitworth's Gift Chest Jewelers, First Community Bank, and Key Drugs in Poplar Bluff. American Woman. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Today, it's all about Haunted Poplar Bluff. <laughs> I love it. Joining me in the studio, we have Penny McGath with Downtown Poplar Bluff. How are you doing, ma'am? Great. And you? I am hunky-dory. Better than I deserve, as Dave Ramsey always says. Mm-hmm. Sabrina Berger with uh, Poplar Bluff Kiwanis. How are you? I'm as well as you. Well, they've been sitting here. <laughs> they've just been chatting up a storm with each other about babies. Babies, babies, babies. Babies, babies, babies. But we want to shift gears and talk a little bit about Poplar Bluff. And, yes. and the, the haunted past of Poplar Bluff and the haunted present of Poplar Bluff. <laughs> oh, so. boy, the future is bleak. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Only for Halloween. Well, course. guys, I got to tell you, uh, somebody, one of, our, our, one of my coworkers here at the station showed me a website the other day that has ghost stories from all over Missouri. And there are several from Poplar Bluff on the website. Yep. Yeah. You ought to check it out. I'll have to send you the link because it's really yeah. interesting stuff. We'll see if it's... And any of the stories that we have. Exactly. Mm-hmm. See if they match up. Maybe we need to add them Maybe. to our walking tours of downtown Poplar Bluff. Now, this is kind of different. It's the first year we've done this. Yes, it is. Uh, walking tours, kind of giving some Poplar Bluff history and that sort of thing, yes. as well as some of the ghost stories yes. that have been passed down, sometimes from generation to generation. Yes, some of them have been. Some of them are recent. Yeah. Some of them have been passed down. And I'm so excited to, to get to hear <laughs> some of these the stories. I'm, I'm telling you, I love this stuff. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm so fascinated with this stuff. I, I love ghost stories. And I love the whole paranormal kind of a thing. Don't know if I believe it, but I love it. Well, I, I find it, it interesting. It's, if it's daylight out. Yeah. With a group of friends. <laughs> Don't want to hear these stories too dark when it's too no, dark. And go anything. home alone in the dark house. Yeah. Ooh, no. but that's when they really set in. <laughs> yes, they <laughs> you do. Know? That's when you really start appreciating those stories. <laughs> and, of course, that Nightmare at Kenyon School. And, uh, Sabrina, you've been working on this for a long time. I uh, have. Getting everything yes. geared up. How's it going so far? You've been open, what, two weekends already? Yeah, we've had three open nights, and we've had almost 900 people through the door already. Wow. That's that pretty wow. good, isn't it? Yes. Are you yes. pleased with the results Extremely so far? Extremely pleased, And yes. you've still got three more weekends to yeah, go. ten more days. Where ten people can take nights. advantage mm-hmm. of this. Now, I heard a rumor. Tell me if you've heard this. I heard there was a death in Kenyon School. Is oh, that true? Uh, probably when the tornadoes came through. Yeah. Was in the 20s. So it got hit hard? Mm -hmm. It did? Wow. See, I didn't know when it happened or anything like that. I had just been told, yeah, there was a, a, and a child is what they told me, that a child had passed away in the school That's my understanding. I don't know the details or the the history of it or anything. It was just brought up during conversation. But, um, you know, come out and talk to to uh, the Wyatts who own the building now and I'm sure they have a lot more information about the history of that building and and what it's been through because they have seen it from the bones out. (laughs) Did you have any uh, strange things happen while you were getting set up for the the haunted house and that kind of thing? I will say this, if Uh it's haunted and the ghosts are having a good time because they continuously pull down props and really and, <laughs> and it's usually um in, a, in the same spot like you'll just see this this one spot everything works until you get to this one spot and um there's always a piece of uh black plastic that is folded over nice and neat really yeah and we have to reattach it every night <laughs> Well, they should have fun too. Yeah. And uh, well, we have yeah, a section yeah. where um, we have we have it's one section, home, you know, <laughs> where there's um, the pool noodles. Uh huh. Okay, I we bought up like every pool noodle that was left on clearance so before cute. at the end of summer. Uh huh. And we hung them in one of the corridors, and uh, we ha- I have a gal that's near them, and in fact, several of the rooms can hear because they're they're hooked through with, with metal Jeez. over uh-huh. um, through the noodle, which then goes over. The, those metal things that the the ceiling the tiles ceiling are on tiles. the grid, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and so they're hooked onto that, and there's a little metal, and they hear the rattle, and so when people go through it, it's kind of a trigger for the rest of the house to know, hey, somebody's, somebody's coming. coming through. Yeah. And yeah. Um, there's been times when you hear those rattling, and there's nobody coming. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just got a little bit of chill bumps there. Pretty fun. Oh, I just did too. <laughs> <laughs> 
Interesting. Because I spent a lot of time. Well, in yeah. That you. I mean, just the setup. Alone, I have a key. I mean, know? I can go in anytime I want. I don't care if Ace is home because Asa actually lives there in, a, in an apartment. Yeah. But I don't ever like have to go to him to get in. It's just he's separated sure. in, in the same building. But yeah, we've scared each other a few times too. Like he won't know I'm there, and he'll come walking around and. Oh, <laughs> And, and so you'll think, oh, it's just so and so, and then you realize they're not here. Well, well, then what was that? <laughs> Have you had a chance to ask him if he's had any experiences living in the building? I mean, he won't talk about it. Really? Oh, no, won't. he just will not talk about it. <laughs> well, you know, that kind of tells me that maybe that he has had something. It happen. could be because if nothing had happened, why would he not want to talk about it? Yeah, he'll just be like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. And Penny, you you know, as a, a former employee in the in the courthouse, you had some repetitive things happen. Oh, and at City Hall, actually. Yeah. Yes. At City Hall, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, something about a, a cork board or a bulletin yes. board or something. Because yes. her story about the plastic being folded over reminded yes. me of your story. Yes. Uh, of this thing, every morning when you'd come in, it'd be in the floor. It'd be in the floor because I disturbed something in the building that shouldn't have been disturbed. Oh, oh my goodness. I think that's in our walking tour. I hope it? so. I, I hope so. Yeah. Oh. The story. Yeah. Now you've got the inside scoop. I know. That's, right. that's what I was wanting. Stories like these <laughs> and more when you buy your ticket to take the tour. <laughs> That was a very good commercial there. <laughs> I did. I was going down. I don't know that this is in the tour, so I'll go ahead and tell it. Okay. But one day I was going down the back stairwell uh, of City Hall, which, you know, was a hospital clinic. Sure, sure. And I know that I saw somebody in a white T-shirt going down the stairwell. Now, at the bottom, there are two doors, but there's no light down there whatsoever. So there was nothing. It wasn't the sun. It wasn't reflection off right, of any of the right. doors because there's no glass. It's all just nothing. Nothing to reflect on. It, but I saw... It looked like a man wearing a white T-shirt going down those steps. But when I when I got there, nobody was there, and the doors weren't open. Did that kind of freak you out a little bit? For just a few seconds, but then I was on my way out, so I didn't <laughs> think twice about it. Just get out of the building. Just get out. <laughs> yes, run. Well, we're actually going to be talking about a couple of these haunted attractions here in the Poplar Bluff area for the season. Uh, and I'm just kind of tickled about all this. I love that we've got more than one. I mean, because we went there for a, a while where we really didn't have much haunted stuff going on in town. I want to so. tell a story. Okay. Can I tell, tell a story? Because I know sure. it's not on your tour because I haven't told a whole lot of people this story. But it is a Poplar Bluff uh -huh, uh -huh. haunted event. True, it happened to true me story. perfectly. Perfectly. Uh -huh. It was like I was a kid, so I was probably, I was in fifth grade. Okay. And I lived out by Lake Road. And um, we were in a, a rented farmhouse type structure. Um, had an upstairs and a main floor. And when I would sit in a chair to watch TV, I could see out the front door, which had those individual square box type planes or panes of glass. Uh -huh. And it was this wood work in between. So there were sure. many, many of those panes of glass in that front door. That was the front door. And then from that same chair, I could see through the kitchen to the back door, which was a wooden back door with a big square window just at the top. Sure had curtains on it and it, both doors were set with those little chain locks uh -huh. that you could just reach up and chain lock okay so the back door had a chain lock on it and my mother was working at a restaurant nearby so she would walk to work it was within a mile of um at, it's probably still there at uh, t highway restaurant whatever it is deer run restaurants what it used to be called mm -hmm. and um she worked down there as a waitress and so i was at home it was summer Hanging out by myself, reading a book, watching TV, no big deal. Not a care in the Not world. Not a care in the world. <laughs> and all of a sudden, a rock comes bursting through one of those bottom glass panes of the front door and rolls across the floor to the kitchen. And I look, I watch the rock, and when I look at the rock, I see the back door, and it's open as far as that chain link will let it go. Oh, so my. in other words, the door handle had to be opened and pushed in. But the chain link was still holding the door so shut. So keeping it shut, yeah. And as I'm looking at the door, you know how your prickles all get all Oh, yeah, I'm getting them right now. And you're just like, what the <laughs> heck is happening? And I look down, and all the glass from that broken window, which, not a brilliant person, but I would think the glass would be on the inside having followed the... Sure, that's yeah, the, the way it works. The yeah, yeah. It's all out on the front porch. Really? Yeah. 
Well, that is odd, isn't it? So, as soon as I realized that the rock is in the kitchen and the glass is on the front porch and the back door is open, that's all that I needed, I jumped up, barefoot, opened the front door, jumped over the glass, down the steps, and ran that mile down to Deer Run Restaurant, <laughs> screaming the entire way. When I, wa when I got to the restaurant, they thought that someone had physically attacked me because I was, <gasps> they're in the house and blah, 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 and I'm just... Just a, a mess. A total oh, mess. I bet. Call me down. I'm like, it's a ghost. It's a ghost. <laughs> Nobody so when the believed back door me. Was they open? thought some of the neighborhood kids were playing a prank on me. But that glass <laughs> did not behave correctly. <laughs> yeah, that is odd. And that's what Because everybody me knows when, when it's broken from the outside, the glass goes to the inside. Yes. When it's broken from the inside, it goes to the outside. Yeah. So, but you couldn't see anybody at the back door? No, it was just it was just that crack, you know, about six inches where the chain stopped it. No so kidding. It, they tried there and couldn't get my attention, so they went to the front. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I, we didn't live in that house very long. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't because of that, was it? I don't know. I just remember we didn't live there very long. <laughs> Mom so, had stories. I, I, yeah, I was going to say, did your mom come back down there and, and check it out after that and kind of see what was going on? I really don't remember what happened. I just I remember bet being not. You were just a too mess. Freaked and I, out. I, well, yeah. I think I waited there until she got off work because I didn't want to go back to the house. I know that. Bless By your myself. heart. Fifth grade. Trippy. <laughs> trippy, trippy, trippy. See, I want some cool stories to tell like that. I don't really have them. <laughs> I've been going out looking for them, but I don't have them. I don't know. I don't want to see anything like that again. I know that. So I'm kind of brave, I guess, when when you think about what we're doing over at school and walking around. And I'm and a chicken. I'm <laughs> a chicken. We were we were and all sitting around this. in a break, um, and we're all in. You know, everyone's in their outfits and their getups and in character. In character, yes. And we have some of them that are in full masks mm -hmm. and out. You know, jumpsuits and stuff like that and. Oh, goodness goes gracious. Goes outside and... <laughs> <laughs> I wish this was TV right now. I know, right? She, so Penny's I can show this picture of Penny just showed with me. Oh, my house. gosh. That was pretty, pretty scary. That is um, scary. And so we're all sitting in the gymnasium, right? And just having a break and stuff. And some of them go out and then some of them come back in. And, sure. And we were kind of giddy at one point at one of the tables because we were like, how do we know that's the same person that went out? What <laughs> if... That person disappeared, and there's a serial killer coming back in his outfit. Oh, my gosh. Costume. You can get yourself so worked up. Oh, sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Because some of them, they really take their character very seriously. <laughs> well, very that's good, though. Seriously. That's what makes a good haunted house. Yeah. It is, because just going up on the second floor when the lights were out while, while uh -huh. the, everyone was downstairs working was kind of creepy on its own just being in a the floors creak the floors and the creak, doors creak yes so you can't imagine what it's like down there when there's people down there no kidding around. yeah so i didn't realize you were a part of the haunted house she's a member of our kiwanis club i am so you, you should see this picture she just showed me. <laughs> did you do her makeup? No, Tim Thompson did. Really? TV. Oh, well, there's another good person to do yep. it. See, he's bragged on your monster makeup I know, and your ability to do that. Now you can brag on his because that's, right. that's pretty impressive looking. Yep. He's been, he's been really good. He won't be there this weekend because uh, he's got uh, Marvin's Room. Yes. Yeah, that's right. This is the last weekend of Marvin's yeah. Room. There. Yeah. I'd like to go see that. Yeah. Well, even though I'm a chicken, I... I'm having a lot of fun. It is fun it to is do fun. this kind of she thing. She will not like go through the, the house room. by I yourself. Just go through some of it. I did. You had to to get to your room. <laughs> you know, I could go outside and go in backwards, <laughs> and I did that the first few times. But I have gone through it pieces at a yeah. time with the lights on. on. <laughs> well, it tells you I'm a chicken. From that picture, it looks to me like you've gone for. Uh, you've tried to create a realistic looking. Zombies, monsters, Walking Dead kinds a of, of things. There, you know? there is. Um, it's. I want to call it a safe haunted house. There, there isn't anything that's shocking. There isn't any person being devoured or abused or. There's no. None of that is in this house. It's literally people jumping out of the dark. Entry. Shock value. Yeah. The the. It's the scare. Yeah. Without without the. The, horrific the shock. Gross. Yeah, it's not. Right. It's not offensive. Without all the gruesome yeah. stuff, like some of the haunted. And that was really seen. actually a very important aspect for me. And I've done a little bit of research and I actually communicated with the um, 
folks that run a lot of the most successful ones in the country up in St. Louis. Uh -huh. And their, their best advice was to stay true to the original idea of horror, not the modern day version of realistic horror. And t because your your attendees need to feel some sense of security, with that they that, that they're going to be scared in the moment, right? But not scared for the rest of their night. Oh, that's a that's a good way to put it. That's yeah, a good they, way they to don't put need it. Because nobody wants to go home they, scared to death. Right. Yeah, to see exactly. <laughs> and so they don't want to feel like they're in Texas Chainsaw right. as Massacre. Right. As they run something. out of the building, they're laughing and oh my right. gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you know. Because you get that little adrenaline going. A, there's a level and, of yeah. enjoyment. You should not feel disturbed when you leave. See, that's one thing I, with haunted houses and stuff. I have never been one of those persons that was truly scared while I'm in there because I know it's all fake. It's kind of like watching horror movies. Yeah. They never really scare me either. Yeah. The ones that scare me are those movies that are like, you know, like uh, about outbreaks of disease. <laughs> stuff that can really happen. Yeah. That's yeah. what scares me. Horror yeah. movies, they don't, they don't really scare me. Well, we have a lot of really talented people who have volunteered their time, and each person that is working is not a paid actor. They're a volunteer from our community who have decided to come in and support our efforts Isn't to that cool? make the improvements at Bacon Park that we want to do. And this is a great way to do that. It is. To raise the money fun. for those those improvements at the park. That's what really this is all about. Sure. Nightmare at Kenyon School. You guys decided, you know, we want to make some more. Because Bacon Park's amazing already. It can be. I mean, it really <laughs> is. But but you want to make it even better. Right. Yeah, you want to make it even better. And so you just said, hey, let's do a haunted house. We'll raise some money. We'll make these improvements we want to make. Yeah. And make the community better. Yep. What a great way to do it. We have a lot of goals and a lot of things that we need to prepare for in the fu near future. Mm -hmm. With the moving of the Poplar Bluff High School and the sports teams to a future new complex, um, the use of our fields will be a lot less, and their obligation will be to maintain their own fields rather than the park. And right, so the, right. the groundskeeping is soon going to become our own financial responsibility, whereas in the past, the relationship with the um, school system has been br just wonderful. Kind uh, of a partnership, Yes, it's it? been a wonderful yeah. partnership, and we're going to miss them, but, you know, we realize that in a few years, we need to be prepared, and so this fundraising effort has allowed us to make enough money to put back enough to carry us through while we develop other ways to maintain the financial responsibilities of groundskeeping. Also, the other goal is to improve the um, structures and make the safety and um, stability and the appearance of the current play toys, uh, the environment that way, um, more suitable and obviously just updated and, and beautiful. Yeah. And my goal, of course, is to make sure that we get a toddler play area. You know, that's the thing with, with parks. You want them to be attractive. You yeah. want them to be uh, these these common, kind of like formal gardens almost. Absolutely. You want them to be pretty, but you still have to make sure they're functional. Yes. Because you don't want that formal garden where everybody's afraid to step off a path kind of attitude. Right. It's a park, for crying out loud. So. And, it, and, it and bacon's a great mix of that. It should maintain. You, should, you have to maintain its beauty. <laughs> and that's a lot of work because not everybody has the respect for the structures that they should have. You know, that's what I was just going to say. <laughs> One thing you guys have always been really successful is the, the playground equipment is always in good shape. Never had any, I've never seen any sign of abuse of them or anything like that. But, you know, you have the vandalism kind of sure, thing. Sure, we, the, the we, we, we battle that problem weekly. At the, weekly. Yeah, but we also I want have to notice because every time club. I go, there's more graffiti. You yes, know? And, and it's, you can tell that the, we've, once a month we have a, a fix-it day and, and our group, you know, sends out the, the folks that have the, the knowledge and the tools and the time to go out. And so that's, our club is so large right now that we, we can branch off into good-sized committees that can maintain certain areas of our club's responsibilities to our community. And while there are some of us who are really focused on the haunted house, there are others who are really focused on the maintenance and the care of the park. And there are others that are focused on um, Pancake Day and, and the Wolf Creek Run, which is a new event that we have every year now. And just the bears. The bears, yes. We're, we're so excited about the bears. We are buying bears up like crazy little bears about oh, six that? inches tall okay little you're free bears. you were freaking me out there because i had bears. not heard anything about bears and i'm thinking why are they <laughs> buying 
buying <laughs> bears up. We're teddy buying bears. up what? bears, little teddy bears little that are about bears. six, okay. eight inches tall. Uh -huh. And the Kiwanians are buying them for $10 a piece. Okay, so this is our personal mission in the club now, to buy the bears. And then those bears serve two purposes. Okay. The $10 we pay for the bear allows up to five women and children to get the immunization they need to eliminate the risk of neonatal and maternal tetanus in third world countries. It costs less than $2 per shot that will save their life. Wow. That's it. It is a wow. horrible, horrible disease. And it afflicts a lot of third world countries, and it's because of the well water that they drink, and it's in the land, it comes up. And neonatal and maternal tetanus, neonatal tetanus is a horrible way to die, and it does. It kills babies, and that's a horrible thing to have to say, but $2 can save the life of that unborn child before it's ever even created. Wow. And so we are buying the right to immunize these women before they become pregnant so that their unborn child comes into the world healthy and at that risk of dying from this terrible thing. Oh, that's great. And the mothers can also succumb to it as well. So it's a very risky thing that involves two lives at once. So less than $2. So the bear, every time we buy a $10 bear, which is really that's like five. a dollar bear yeah. somewhere, mm -hmm. um, but it allows five us to walk away knowing that we helped save the lives of five people. The second responsibility of the bear is it is presented then to our local Poplar Bluff Police Department and Fire Department and the EMTs I think as well. So like all of the emergency technicians are getting these bears and they keep them in their rigs and when they go to an emergency where a child is present and needs attention away from anybody else and that security comes in the shape of a little six to eight inch bear. That's awesome. That's awesome. So when like uh, the fire department goes to a a burned out home or mm -hmm. something like that and there's children there they're they scared they've lost on. everything yeah it gives them something to hold yep. on to how and cool is that so that's another that thing that we're, that we're doing <laughs> yeah right. wow how cool but it's not just limited to kiwanians to buy the bears oh no 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 anyone but can buy a bear right now it is we're getting ready to actually go out into popper bluff more um, prevalent, I think, and just start offering it as an opportunity. And, and you can keep the bear or you can donate it to the, the departments that will issue them at a time of need. Very cool. That's me. <laughs> and you I can, like and we'll, that. we'll give them names and little cards. Oh. <laughs> and it's usually named after a child in a third world country. That's awesome. Yep. Well, how cool. Well, really you, so you guys are, are pretty dang busy. Really. We are very busy, but we are also a large club full uh -huh. of people who care. And and so, yes, we're working on an international level, but we're also working on a local level. And we extend that invitation to, hum, to come and, and support our efforts to improve the park by attending Nightmare at Kenyon School and uh, to stay involved in your community and attend any of the events and bring your whole family. Make sure that you're doing that as a family because that experience is something that will build character in them as they, as they grow. Yes, Things where you can learn history and you can do lots of of chit chats and maybe even create your own stories along the way because <laughs> using your imagination is a brilliant way to spend um, family time but go to the ghost tours too because it's full of truth and legend a, li a little fiction a little fact a little fiction and a little fantasy yeah and I was nothing wrong with at that the number of families that have been coming to the the haunted house or Yes, I, I I am surprised too at at how many families, moms, dads, and kids, go through as a as a family into the house. I'm I'm going to go out here and just say that I I I raise concern about bringing kids who are five and under into our haunted house. It's it's pretty scary. Yeah, and there's strobe lights in effect, and um, little ones can't always process that much information um they might not have a nightmare that night but they might have one two weeks later um and i just i really feel like it's my responsibility to say use good judgment and if you need to come out as a family take the six minutes to separate yourself from the little ones and ask for help we'll be happy to hang out with them and We'll cut into a pumpkin or something while you go through or, you know, whatever it takes. Or bring Grandma and, and let her and the kids watch 
Frankenstein <laughs> on the TV. Right. We're talking about like the old black and white ones, you know, that are not scary. Right. <laughs> so you got a, a TV going there. If, We've if got a 25 get, foot screen. If you get there and the kids <laughs> just kind of flip out and you think this is probably not the best idea, we'll just let them stay here and, yeah. and chill while we go inside get, in the go gymnasium. Get the where it's nice scared and warm. out of us. Yeah. <laughs> hot chocolate, hot cider. cider. Oh wow! We had zombie cues. You've thought of everything. Yes. Zombie cues were awesome. And what is zombie cues? It's a barbecue made from zombie meat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Steve Whitworth creates the most delicious barbecue. And so we call it zombie, zombie cues. <laughs> So you've actually got some food available, too. Yes. So bring a little extra cash for that, too. Sure. Come out and have dinner with us. We've got some tables and chairs set up so you can enjoy yourself before you go through the house. There you go. We've got awesome, awesome. sweatshirts and T-shirts. They're $30 for the sweatshirts, $10, uh, $15 for the T-shirts. They come in purple or black. And they have actually a picture of the school. Yeah. That's and then cool it says, looking. I survived the nightmare at Kenyon School. I like that. And then you I have like to really give a hands big hand uh, for thanking our sponsors who are on the back. Absolutely. They've always got our back, and I love that about the people here. That's right. They've always got your back. Yeah. On your back. On my back. On her back. On back. <laughs> I wasn't even sure you realized you had said it that way. <laughs> <laughs> you said it so just casually, like, you know, oh, no big deal. I'm going to claim it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, I love it. And, of course, you've got on Saturdays, you're doing a monster-free version. So yes. those little kids that... The little kids can come that through then. That we really didn't handle it well during the week. For $5. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the monster-free, we, we sold that baby out last Saturday from 4 to 6 p.m. We were nonstop. Every, really? It would take me approximately six minutes to take them through the house. Uh-huh. Um, and that's obviously with no scares. It, there's... Um, the decorations and the lights and the sounds are all in effect. I walk through with my flashlight and I hang on to their hands, you know, whatever I need to do to get them through safely. I talk to them about what's in the room and um, sometimes I'll, you know, I'll tell mom and dad or whoever's with them like, well, normally Annabelle's in that chair or normally we might have this in this room or you might see so-and-so here. And that gives it a little bit of interest for the grown-ups. The kids mostly... I hope have no idea who I'm talking about. <laughs> sure, sure. Oh, gosh, let's hope they don't know who Annabelle is. Right. <laughs> uh, so you've taken from some movies yeah. and that kind of thing as oh, well. Yeah. So we You're, will recognize some of the characters. To, to a degree, yeah. It's uh, that personal touch, obviously. But um, the, the, the characters that you do. So, yeah, there's a lot of movie characters um, just because they're so familiar. And, and, and actually, there's a, some some comfort in understanding and knowing and being familiar with a monster already from your movie past that it allows There's you to have enough courage to move forward. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty fun to be in the house, even if you're not a, a part of it, uh -huh. just walking through. It's hilarious to to hear the people, the talking and the how they're scared and when they, they run and it, it is it is so much <laughs> I've, I've, I go through with a lot of groups I just uh -huh. circle through all the time I'm yes. in constant motion the whole time making sure A that I'm taking care of the actors and, and that they have water and pizza when they need to have it and a potty break you know feeding time sure. whatever um, the zombies have to eat yeah they have to eat Zom um, zombies gotta eat <laughs> and then getting feedback as i go to make sure that we are keeping up with what their expectations are and if something um doesn't seem to to consistently do what i think it should do then we change it which is why we change the box maze to a walking box maze instead of a crawling box maze yeah, I'd rather walk than crawl, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm not doing either. It's rough no. on the knees to do that crawling yeah. thing. I hear Mary Kenyon is going to be there now. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Well, tell us about that. I don't know anything about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just that Mary she's going to be there. Mary Kenyon's going to make an appearance now. I think we've, we've either we've funneled her in or... Maybe she's the one folding the plastic nice and neat. <laughs> she be. just showed up one I night. I don't even know who Mary Kenyon is. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if that's a made-up person or somebody that the school was <laughs> named after. I really don't know. I'm just hoping somebody educates me. 
Oh, now you got my curiosity up. <laughs> I'm going to be Googling that. Actually. I know. That's what I was just thinking. I'm going to have to look that up and okay, see if I can good. find Somebody it. Somebody fill me in. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. Every weekend through October. So this weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. Yeah, that's right. We're opening up the Sunday nights now for the next two weeks. Uh, and then, of course, next weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then uh, We're off two the, days. The, the three days <laughs> <laughs> the three days leading up to Halloween, so the 29th and 30th and 31st, you'll be open. And November 1st. And Oh, well, that's not on my list. I know. November it's, 1st. Uh, it's on the posters, and it's on the uh, advertisement opportunities, and there'll be a huge surprise for people if they decide to come in November, because it's it's... After Halloween officially moves into November, all sorts of craziness ensues. So oh, really? everything gets turned upside down. You may have to come back through if yeah. you survive the first time. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking anybody that went through before that may want to come back again then. Just if November 1st. All it's going to be different. It It'll be a different. To, it is going to be mayhem. <laughs> oh, Lord. I thought it was mayhem now. <laughs> Well, she's really got my curiosity up now. <laughs> What's the number one thing people do in November? Thanksgiving. Besides Thanksgiving. <laughs> they have to do something to get Thanksgiving, basically. Eat. <laughs> and how do they eat? What do they eat and where do they get it? It's turkey, turkey from the store. I don't. Oh, I come guess on. I'm Not everybody your... gets their meat from the store. What do people do? Oh, turkey do hunting. They go hunting. Hunting, yes. Hunting. Turkey November and deer hunting. Hunting. Yeah. Oh. Okay, now you got me. So now you kind of have an idea of what our theme will be November 1st. Oh, my gosh. It'll so be hunting season. If I come November 1st. <laughs> that waskily wabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to be the hunter or the hunted? I'm not oh. saying a word. Sometimes you're the cattle, sometimes you're the butcher. Oh, I thought you were going to say the prod. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Sometimes you're the cattle, sometimes you're the prod. <laughs> All I know is that anybody listening that watches The Dead knows exactly what I just referred but, to. And I don't, because I don't like that. I, you know, I tried. I've heard so many people go on and on and on and on and on about Walking Dead, and I thought, okay, I've got to start watching this because... Everybody's watching this show. My niece loaned me the first season. I didn't even get through the first episode. Oh, my goodness. I just couldn't get into it. Oh, it's, I, I don't it's know addictive. why. I, and see, that's what I, I thought for sure, that immediately I would just get hooked, but it just didn't happen. It's okay. I'm sorry. I remember not even knowing what that movie, that show was until I was watching an awards show and they kept winning all these awards. And I was like, what are they talking about? <laughs> who, what is who this show? Who does a zombie show on TV? Yeah, exactly. AMC. <laughs> I had the same problem getting hooked on those stupid Saw movies that you drug me to, too. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get into that either. And she loves them. Loves them. And I'm I like, do. I hey, love the ingeniousness whatever. of it. Like, Seven is one of my favorite movies of all time, too. It's the, it's the traps. I'm a, I'm a puzzle solver by nature. That is what I want most in the world is to say, I did it. I solved it. Except for Rubik's Cube. <laughs> but I love solving problems and puzzles and the, the the what I love most about those movies is the contraptions they devise the traps, traps traps are a beautiful thing. It just I think when I see something like that I worry about the sanity of the person that wrote it. I have a lot of people you know? worrying about my sanity right yes, now. Yes, I, I could see how that could happen. <laughs> <laughs> I could see how that could happen. You know, the, and the the, truth if your mind is sick enough to come up with these things. What's going on in there? You know, you know what I mean? She's you know, disturbed. Well, disturbed, yes. The Japanese have this thing where you, most of the Japan... Jap, the Jap, Japanis? Jap, <laughs> Japan... Japanimation? Japanimation? Japan Japan there it is. <laughs> um, is very violent. It is, isn't it? And the yeah. people in general, their behavior is not. And so they express all of that... Through their art, through the Japanimation or their, their art. And so the violence is expelled in the art forms uh -huh. rather than in their daily life. So is that what it, this, this doing, this organizing, this nightmare at Kenyon School is what keeps is you sane? expelling my insanity. <laughs> so that you don't kill your husband? No. <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, it, 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 I actually go home and I'm happy and stress-free and I'm a little tired. But I, um, I, I feel like when I watch a scary movie, I detach from everything else that's wearing me out. And I get to live in a little fantasy world and I get scared.
scared and then I get relieved and then I get saved and then everything's good. So, um, but you know, it's just it's that roller coaster of oh, I gotta feel something besides what I feel every day, and um, you know the stress of work and, sure. and issues that come up because life Cathartic. is full of them. Yes, and so I just detach by burying myself in scary movies. I don't like to watch dramas as much, and sometimes comedies just don't suit me, but I can always find time to watch a scary movie. So that's just my thing. I don't expect everyone to be like that, but I, I do expect people to think that I'm not crazy. So people coming through <laughs> Nightmare at Kenyon School can will, will leave. Yeah, the, 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 the get tension. Some of that tension and, and, out. And, oh, yeah, and you just feel so good when you get out, and you're laughing, and you're like, I survived. And then you buy the shirt. <laughs> That's right. And then you buy the shirt. Then you buy the shirt. Then you come do a walking tour. That's right. Walking Through downtown Poplar right. Bluff and hear some uh, stories of, uh, of of the history of Poplar Bluff and yes. the hauntings of Poplar Bluff. And trust me, there's, you know, when you start talking to people about, you know, just ask them, hey, have you ever experienced any kind of paranormal activity? Get any ghost stories you've mm -hmm. heard that have been passed on to you, that kind of thing. And it's amazing how many people do have a story to tell. That's right. Oh, sure. Except Brittany. I want a story to tell. <laughs> want Dad, story it. I want and one. And downtown so has changed over the years. That, yes, it has. And, it? and so that you'll get to hear that history as well. Yeah. So it's going to be very interesting. The walking tours and Nightmare at Kenyon School, as well as, we haven't even mentioned it today, but uh, the uh, Haunted uh, Grotto. Haunted Grotto. Yeah. Which starts the 24th and 25th. So they'll city be having that one them. pretty. Yep, that's right. We've joined together with them on a city pass for their opening night and that means that when you buy um you spend 24 dollars instead of 30 which is 10 at each place sure spend 24 dollars you get an armband for each location you go and they cut off your armband and you go through so you can start at the ghost tours get your three armbands and then come to Kenyon school then go out to the haunted grotto and you get three scares in one night or one weekend that's right. <laughs> Three scares for the price of. <laughs> and the ghost tours start at 6 o'clock, and our last tour is at 9.30, unless we have a line of people. Yeah. We'll stay there. And like you said, it's $10 a person. We ask that people wear sensible shoes because we are going to be walking, you know. Sure, sure. There's curbs. And there's there's curbs and roads and, roads and hills. Steps. We'll be climbing steps. And bring a flashlight because it there are some dark areas. Don't bring we'll a flashlight through. to my... No, bring no, a flashlight to the walking tour. Yeah, yeah, to the walking tour. It would be really cool if we could do some kind of candlelit tour thing, wouldn't oh, it? Yeah. Lanterns. Maybe next Lanterns. year. Lanterns. Yeah. I took a, a cave tour years ago at, a, at a, a huge cave out west, and they had taken these old molasses cans mm -hmm. with the handles, turned the handle to the side, poked a hole, put a little candle in there, and it was like a old-fashioned oh, wow. flashlight. But, but it was kind of protected with the can around it. We should just try to do something like oh, that yeah. for next year. Yeah. It just creates more atmosphere than oh, a yeah. flashlight. Oh, yeah. Nothing, I mean, I love flashlights. Don't right. get me wrong. But the, the candles are it's just more eerie to start with. You know? More yes, they are. Yeah. the time that, they're ta yeah, that you're talking that we're about. talking about. And ours so. starts this weekend. Yes, this weekend. We start Friday night. Right, Friday night, Saturday night. We're not doing them on Sundays, are no, we? No, just okay. Friday and Friday Saturday. and Saturday evenings. This weekend. Uh, 6 to 9.30. Next that's right. Ten dollars per person. Where do, where do they need to start at? Because I've had a lot of people asking me. Where we're at productive staffing. At productive staffing, yes. uh, which of course is just across, kind of from the our, post office. Yeah, catty corner there yes. from the post office. On uh, Fifth so, Street. On Fifth Street. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so that's where they will start. We'll you can start pay and end there. there. We'll start no. and end there, so you can park anywhere around that area. Okay. Excellent. And we, when doing our tours, we decided that it was really appropriate for ages ten and up. Okay. It's it's not scaring. We don't have people jumping out. Yeah, there's out. nobody going to jump there's out. Nobody's going to do any of it's that. It's just telling stories. It's just telling stories. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot but of But some of the stories could kind of freak a kid, a younger right. child out, because they some of them are based on actual things, you That's know, right. actual stories. So, right. And it's amazing how so many people told the same story, too. Yeah. So it wasn't just something that you thought someone made up I right, mean, right a lot of these are repetitive stories that we've heard and some of them more than one person's experience the same thing yeah when we went through a practice run we probably got about 10 more stories that night really the people we were that were doing the the tour guides we were doing That's a practice awesome. walkthrough and we would as we were walking we encountered 
other people on the walk that were visiting in downtown, and we would just talk to them. And they had stories to tell. Oh, no kidding. So, See, I, mean, I missed just, the rehearsal because I yeah. was at Boys and it's Girls It's just Club, blossoming. Yeah. And I bet there are so many more stories oh. that we haven't even... There's probably dozens more that we haven't even heard yet. You're and, right. Yeah. So that we, truth be told, we, we could probably do this for months. We probably could. And just add to it each time. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> there have been a lot of things. And like I say, this website that one of my coworkers, because she knows I'm kind of fascinated with all this. And so... Uh, she sent it to me. She said, you're not going to believe how many things are on there from Poplar Bluff. Oh, yeah. uh, so I'm going to check all those out. There are places that I would not stay overnight downtown. Let me just tell you. Well, not just downtown, but all over Poplar Bluff. But yeah. Well, I'm still trying to I'm work a chicken, at, remember? <laughs> I'm still trying to work out my overnight stay at the train depot. Yeah. I think that's going to be fun. I'm looking yes. forward to that. I had an experience there, too. Oh, see? I did. I love it. And someone was with me there, so it's not just me making it up. It really did happen. Right. So very cool. It's it, it's and it's funny because I'm I am such a chicken and I'm afraid <laughs> of the dark and I don't like being scared. Uh -huh. But I've always, growing up, there was a house that was across from my grandparents' house and and other places, and I always just knew that there was that they were haunted. I just knew it. And I would just sit outside and I would just stare at that house <laughs> for hours during the day and at night waiting to see something. Although I know I didn't want to see it. <laughs> you but were I, waiting for it even though you didn't want it. it. Yeah. Now, I don't understand that, but oh, but I did. I so always, did you ever see anything? No, I never did oh, see it. Probably for the better that I did. <laughs> she but. scared them off. I stared them down. That's you right. You probably would have wanted to move if you had seen right. something. So yeah. I was at home yesterday now. by myself, and I went up the door into our house is in the garage, and I went into the back bedroom and walked back out, and the door from the garage was standing wide open. Now, how it got open, I don't know. It, it, oh. It's happened several times. If it keeps happening, I'm going to have to move. <laughs> well, put a camera on it. Put a little video camera on it. Get the deer cam on it. The deer yeah, cam. you know, so that yeah. you can see what's going on there. Well, that, that same coworker <laughs> that sent me the website sent me a, a video uh, clip the other day, and I'm going to try to get it on the KWOC Facebook page because it's really fascinating too. And it's actually the uh, cameras at an office, a, a fairly large office building. There's uh, the camera, you know, several different cameras at different locations. And so when you're watching it, it's showing one location for a second and then another location for a, se a second or right. two or something and another locate through this building. And then at 2 a.m., all of a sudden, crazy things start happening. Uh, these office chairs <clears throat> start rolling around the office by themselves. Doors open and close, slam closed. Uh, oh my goodness. File cabinet uh, drawers open, yeah. papers come flying out, all kinds of nonsense going on. And I was watching it really closely and, and watching the time because it it's got the time, uh, what's that called, where it prints it actually the on the... Time stamp on it. Yeah, the time stamp on it. And so I was watching that time stamp trying to make sure that nobody had messed with it, edited it, that kind of a thing. But there's some wild stuff going on in that office building wow. and it didn't start till 2 a.m. And the people that say that you know we're talking about said so, you know this is what happens at two a.m. in this building. Oh my goodness! So I, get I mean, out. <laughs> it's pretty wild, seriously. I I mean lots of stuff going on. There's one I, one of the door handles just it's like somebody's got a hold of it and they're just shaking the heck out of that door handle for several minutes. Oh just, just shake, 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 and it's making this noise, you know. And but all this other stuff's going on at the same time. It's wild stuff. Now see, I'd like to see that. <laughs> in person. <laughs> I might go screaming from the building if I did, but I'd like to see it. Yes. Because I don't, you know, I, I watched that and I thought, ah, is it true? Is it not true? Has somebody doctored this? Is it, you know, but you can't really see anything in the in the cameras right. that indicate that somebody's done anything to it. And I've never been a believer in in all of that yeah. and, until I've experienced a few, a few, a few things, things myself, yeah. you know. And it's not been on a a scale of where I've hightailed it out of a building and refused to go right, back. Right. Just those little subtle things. <laughs> Thank goodness. I did when I was 12. <laughs> it's yeah. just been subtle, subtle things. You know, like my experience at the depot and, it's, and sure. at, at City Hall. and um, Several things. Several in, things. In downtown. Yes. In the downtown, in the downtown area. area. Very know. intriguing. 
Well, yeah. you know, I just glanced over, and we've got to take a break real quick. Oh, my. <laughs> I didn't realize how late it was already. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be, be right back to talk more about Haunted Poplar Bluff. Nightmare at Kenyon School and the walking tours that are going to start this weekend. I'll be doing it Saturday night. Woohoo! I'm looking forward to it, although I have to be honest, I don't have it all memorized yet. I'm still working on that. It'll come to you. I hope so. <laughs> More Brittany on the Bluff right after this on today's talk, KWOC, 9.30 a.m. and 93.3 FM.
KWOC News Time, 858. Gosh, guys, we <laughs> we kind of talked it all through the, the beginning there. Uh, just a couple of minutes left. So just very quickly, uh, kind of synopsis, uh, give us a synopsis of the Haunted Poplar Bluff idea. What's going on real quick so we can, uh, uh, those people that are just tuning in, know when, when and where to show up. Well, they can start Friday night. If they can do the haunted walking tour of downtown at six o'clock and then from there they can just walk right on up the street to the nightmare at kenyon school that's right we're open at six o'clock as well we have the no scare tours from four to five that's on saturday um and then we're adding sundays to our weekends now so um it's it's an intense opportunity to come and spend the weekend in Poplar Bluff. If you if you don't live here already, you're looking for a way to bring your family out for the weekend. Just right. come on down Saturday and uh, spend the night. And you've got two things you can do, or you can come Friday night and spend the night. And you got two things you can do, and that's right. Stay all weekend if you want. We and I tell love you, to have you, these walking tours. Uh, we were just talking about some of the stories that you're going to hear about. I promise you. Even if you've lived here your whole life, there's going to be something in these walking tours that you've never heard before. That's right. Here's what's the best part about that is what Penny is talking about is based on truth. Yeah, right. And some of it may be a little bit embellished over the years. You just never really know how the details develop. Sure. But it all starts with the core truth. Something happened. Something happened, and it's trying to keep its story alive. And the right. ghost stories that they're talking about are all based on historical something happens. Right. And these buildings were there. These entities were there. And these that's the history part. Happened. Yes, that's where the history is. And mm. it's really great history. It it's is. That yeah. I didn't even know, and I'm the director for downtown. Right. See? I'm yeah. learning new stuff all the time. It And it's fun it's fun interesting facts you're going to walk away thinking oh my gosh i and when, did not know that and when you get done with the true stuff you come down here and i will completely blow your mind with fantasy that's right <laughs> there you go if i can there imagine you go. it you're going to be scared of it <laughs> ten dollars for adults five dollars for children ten and under as that same for the, way with for the walking Kenyan tour school, ten dollars Per person. Per person. Per Glad person. across. Yes. Uh, so reasonably priced entertainment for your family this weekend. Yep. I definitely get out and, and take advantage of these things. And, and like I say, come hear the stories yes. of Poplar Bluff. And, and don't be and afraid of the weather because e uh, now it's supposed the to be walking beautiful tours, by the weekend. if it's raining hard, they will cancel. That's right. Uh, but you buy your ticket when you arrive. So there's no risk. Right, right. And then you can um, come see us. We were we are going to be open rain or shine because we have our lines are waiting inside a gymnasium. So you're oh, that's well covered. Good. That's good. And it's nice and warm in there. Yeah, yeah. with hot cocoa and right. zombie cue and zombie cues. <laughs> And if you can't make it this weekend, then you can still come next weekend right. and do the city pass. Absolutely. Right. And you'll get Absolutely. to do three haunted. Three haunted attractions. attractions. Very cool. Ladies, thank you thank so you. much for Thanks coming in. Thanks for having in. us today. It just flew by, didn't it? Yes. Wow. Time flies when you're talking about ghost stories. <laughs> That's it for Brittany on the Bluff for today. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll do it again tomorrow right here on Today's Talk KWOC.